Hi, my name is Jeff Hay. I'm a college advisor at Bishopsgate Golf Academy in Howie in the Hills, Florida. I have been in the Golf Academy business for 13 years as a director of golf and a college placement advisor, and I've been very fortunate to help many families with their college needs when it comes to having their junior golfers play in college golf. I get a lot of questions about college, and they're very good questions and interesting questions, so I thought I'd share some information with you today. One of the major questions I get are what are the di differences between the different associations and the different divisions in college golf? Uh, in general, there are three main associations in college golf. The NCAA, which you've all heard of, the NAIA, which some of you may have heard of, and the NJCAA, uh, which is the National Junior Collegiate Athletic Association. And uh, most of you probably haven't heard of that uh, because those are two-year schools, whereas the NCAA and the NAIA are, are four-year schools. Uh, you can, however, play in the NJCAA for two years and move on to a four-year school in the NCAA or the NAIA to finish out your collegiate career. Now, what are the differences between these divisions? Well, in the NCAA or associations, in the NCAA, there's three divisions, Division I, II, and III. Uh, Division I is very athletic focused. They're the big, they're the big uh, state schools that you've all heard of, Florida, Florida State, um, and even though they're athletic focused, there's some very high academic schools in Division I, such as Stanford, Duke, Ivy League schools. Uh, Division II are a good balance between athletics and academics. Um, so they pride themselves in, in being that, and they tend to be smaller private schools. And Division III schools uh, tend to be more academic focused, so good education, usually near big cities, and not as strong from a golf perspective. Um, however, the strongest teams in, um, in Division III are very, very good teams. Um, as far as scholarships go in each division in, in the NCAA, in Division I, men are allowed to have four and a half scholarships. For women, six scholarships. In Division II, uh, men, 3.6 scholarships. Women, 5.4 scholarships. In Division Three, there are no golf scholarships available. Um, now, this is all assuming for the schools that do have scholarships in Division One and Two, that the school allows them to have the, the number of scholarships that are allowed. So that means uh, some schools are fully funded and have those scholarships available. Some schools are partially funded and have some scholarships available. And some are not funded at all and they don't have any scholarships. Uh, in the NAIA, they're allowed up to five in both men and women. And in the NJCAA, they're allowed, to eight, allowed up to eight in both men and women. But it changes with the division. There's division one, two, and three in junior college, uh, the NJCAA. And those scholarship numbers do change with, with respect to division. Uh, but to get back to uh, each division and qualifying for a scholarship, I often get asked, you know, what do I have to shoot to play in Division One? What do I have to shoot to play in Division Two? And really, the answer depends um, because often families think that Division One, and there's approximately 300 teams in Division One golf for men, that the Division One teams they're the best teams, and then Division Two start after that. So if there's three, 300 Division One teams, then the best Division Two team. Uh, would be number 301 in terms of ability, but it's not really the case. They're, they're all inter, intermingled because there's Division Three teams that can beat Division Two and Division One teams. Um, so really the level of play depends on uh, the team itself. Uh, Emory, for example, is the number one school, uh, number one golf team in Division Three in men's golf, and their team average is around 71.5, which is exceptional. And you wouldn't think a D3 team would necessarily be able to post those numbers, but they do. And there's more examples like that. Um, so I don't always look at, uh, when it comes to what do I have to shoot to play in each division, I don't always uh, do it by the division, but I sort of divide it up this way. In Division One in the NCAA, there are what's called major conference schools. Uh, major conferences are the SEC, the ACC, uh, the Big Ten, the Big 12, and the Pac-12. So there's five major conferences in college golf. And I would say in both the men's and women's game, if you're not averaging below par, 
um, you're probably not going to play at one of those schools. Uh, there are exceptions to that rule, um, but in general, uh, that's a major factor uh, in terms of securing spots there. Uh, and then I would go mid-majors. These are schools that are, are competitive, but below uh, the five major conferences. And I would say you have to average between uh, 71 and 75 uh, to play at a school like that. And this is assuming that these schools are funded. So I would say these schools that I'm talking about that are not major conference schools, uh, but are close to it and are funded, that's what you would have to average in those cases. And then 76 and above, there's all the other schools. They might be uh, D1, D2, D3. They may be partially funded or not funded at all. And there's a place for players that can't average below 75. And then we have to look at, at those types of schools. So that's sort of where I, I look in terms of uh, determining whether or not a player uh, can play at a major conference school or a mid-major or another competitive school or one of the other schools that aren't funded uh, for, or fully funded. Um, in NAIA and NJCAA, I would say there's some very strong teams in each of those, but there are lots of opportunities for uh, competitive golfers that can't shoot the numbers yet uh, to play in those conferences and or those associations and, and divisions. Um, merits of a, a golf academy. Now, I do get this a lot. Why should I send my son or daughter to a golf academy? Well, one of the reasons is the one we're talking about right now, college. Uh, it's difficult to get exposure uh, for players that are not playing in the U.S. Uh, sometimes the coaching isn't as good in, in their home country and they come here for that reason. And in general, we know what it takes to prepare students for college. Um, we know uh, the ins and, out of ins and outs of college placement, when to start, um, what to do, how to contact coaches, and um, we guide our players through that, that process. Other merits of the academy is it's very much like a college uh, lifestyle here because the schedule is very similar. So our players are in school uh, during the day and they practice approximately 20, 20 hours a week and they compete on weekends, usually about two a month throughout the season. And this is very similar to a college schedule. So when students come here, they get used to being in college because they're following a similar schedule as they will uh, in their collegiate career and also mom and dad aren't here so you're learning to do things on your own. You're learning to do your own laundry, uh, you're learning time management, you're learning to uh, use your resources effectively. Uh, so I know in doing this for so many years that that is something that college coaches are really high on when it comes to players from academies is that they've been away from home and they've lived the college life to a degree and they're ready uh, when, they, when they go to school. Um, another question I get is, is where to start? So what do I do? When do I start? Um, well, the best advice I can give you is that you need to be good at something. So um, being a good player um, helps a lot and, and will create interest. Um, being a good student helps a lot. It will get you into more schools, which will essentially open more doors for you. Um, if you're a uh, a, a below average player and a good student, there's still some very high academic schools you can go to and play, play golf at. If you're a very good student or a very good player and not as strong as a student, you're probably gonna play at one of those you know, major conference schools that, uh, that are very good uh, from, from a collegiate golf standpoint. And then there's everybody else in the middle. Um, there's average students and average players. And there are schools for players like that. But again, why you would come to an academy is to try to move towards being a better student, get the academic support here, go to a good private school in the area, and get the coaching to make you a better player so that we can open more doors uh, from a collegiate golf standpoint. Um, another thing that is very big here uh, at Bishopsgate is character building. And uh, we pride ourselves on um, making that first and foremost a uh, priority at the academy because you are not only being judged on your scores and your academics, um, a coach is interviewing you uh, to see if it's, you're somebody that 
he wants on he or she wants on the team for four years. That's a long time to spend with somebody if you're not of good character. So uh, we have a lot of great kids here and we just continually work with them to become better players, better students, better people. And uh, that's why academies are great places uh, for students to come who want to play college golf.